So we have canine, first premolar, second premolar, first molar to treat, four teeth in a row. There's a significant notch here with a ledge at the gentle margin that I talked about before. And we have maybe uh, four millimeters of recession on the first premolar. There's only maybe two and a half recession on the canine and maybe three on the second premolar with a little notch, not much of a ledge, and a little notching with a ledge on the molar. But continuing to look at the gingiva, you see the mucogingival junction here. Because I've already injected, it's pretty easy to see of where the mucogingival junction is. And there's a minimal, if any, attached gingiva present facial to the premolar. There's a fair amount of attached gingiva, good four and a half millimeters in vertical dimension at the canine, uh, but recession in spite of it. So this would be class one recession. This would be class two. There's a little bit of loss of papillary fill because I can pass the, um, the probe through the contact rather easily. So there's some uh, very early loss of fill and loss of fullness. So this can impact our root coverage a little bit. Um, so we'll lift these papillae to try to overcome that. And as we go on to the molar area, we once again see you know, the mucogingival junction is um, rather, rather shallow. So there's a very uh, small band of gingiva vertically, maybe a millimeter. And if we probe, none of that's attached. So this is all uh, an area that's at risk of further recession. And we're close to the furcation uh, in that region. There's no significant probing depth. The tissue's healthy. The patient has good hygiene. And this is typically what we see in patients with recession, actually, is good, good hygiene. If there were not healthy tissue and there were not good hygiene, then we would not do this procedure until that was established. So we'll start with the canine. I'm using a younger good 7-8 curette that um, Shannon has sharpened.